Hi everybody, Bob Gager from Adobe here with another installment of Ask Bob, where I get to answer questions posed by our Facebook fans. Today's question comes from Karen, and Karen wants to know how to remove some color casts from a photo, but from different parts of a photo. Well, Karen, that's pretty straightforward with Photoshop Elements as soon as you learn the concept of layers. Let's start off by switching to Photoshop Elements, and I've got your photo open up here in the Photoshop Elements Editor. Thanks so much for sending it in. It's always easier to do a demo with your photos instead of mine. So the first thing that we want to do is with your photo open, over here on the top, we want to make sure that we're in expert mode. So there's different modes of the editor across the top, quick, guided, expert. Make sure you're in expert mode, because we're going to use a couple more advanced techniques here in this tutorial. When you're in expert mode, over here on the right-hand side, there's a bunch of different panels you can show. Make sure you're showing the Layers panel. If it's not showing, something like that, just go ahead and click this icon down in the bottom right, the Layers icon, and that'll show that panel for you. When you first open up your photo in Photoshop Elements, it's only going to show one layer, and that's just the layer of your photo. If you're not familiar with layers, they're a fairly easy concept to understand. Just kind of think of them as sheets of paper stacked on top of each other, and you can edit your photo in different ways by drawing on any individual sheet of paper. And then when you look down through all of those sheets of paper, what you're actually seeing is just the composite of all those different layers. So we're going to start off with just one layer here. What I always like to do is make a copy of my original layer so any changes I might make won't affect my original. And the way I do that is simply to click right here on the thumbnail of the layer and drag it up to this little icon right here. This little icon is called our new layers icon. So just drag your layer thumbnail up there and let go. And what that is going to do is make a copy of that layer. So you can see we've got our original background layer, and then we've got a background copy. Now we can do some editing on this background copy without changing the original background layer. So there's a couple different things that you had asked about to do to this photo. One is kind of remove that yellow color cast on your grandson's face, and then the other is remove this reddish color cast across your husband's hair. So we'll do that in two different steps using a very similar technique. First, let's focus in on your grandson's face. So I'm going to use my zoom tool over here on the left, select my zoom tool, and just zoom in to your grandson's face so we can really focus in on that part of the photo. And what we want to do is just think about removing that yellow tone of this part of the image. So with my background copy layer selected, and I know it's selected because it's got this blue as a background, I'm going to come up to the Enhance menu and I'm going to come down to the Adjust Color Choice. And inside Adjust Color, there's lots of different color adjustments we can make. What we want to do is Adjust Color for Skin Tone. So I'm just going to go ahead and click Adjust Color for Skin Tone. I'm going to drag this dialog box over to the right so we can see the controls and we can see your grandson's face at the same time. And the first thing I want to do is just click on part of the image that is a skin tone. And some automatic adjustments will be done. You can see there's a slight change here where Elements has analyzed where I clicked and tried to do its best at adjusting the skin tone. On my monitor, it actually looks like there's a little too much red in that automatic adjustment. So I can fine tune it. Down here, I just click on this blush slider. And I can actually take a lot of those red tones out, remove the blush from his face. If I wanted to add more blush for some reason, I can crank it up. So up or down, doesn't matter. I can adjust it to get exactly the look that I want. So I'm going to go ahead and crank it all the way down. Then I might want to adjust uh, how much tan is in his face. I can crank it way up if I want to give him a tan. That's actually kind of an orange-yellowish look. I don't like that too much. I actually want to take some of that out. So just give him a little bit of tan tone to the face. When I get it exactly as I like it, I just hit OK. And then Photoshop Elements will automatically change my entire photo to match those adjustments. This little eyeball here on that layer, if I want to hide that layer, I just click the eyeball and that layer is invisible and I see the layer that's underneath. Now there isn't a big change between these two, but there's a little bit of a change. So now what we want to do, if I zoom back out to fit, double click the hand tool to do that, and I hide that layer, you can see that those changes that I made are actually being applied to all of the image. Now you mentioned you just want to remove the yellow tone from your grandson's face. 
And so how do we do that? The way we do that is with something called a layer mask. So with this layer selected, I want to click this little icon right here. This is our add layer mask icon. And that's going to create what we call a layer mask. And the real cool thing about layer masks is if I paint on the layer mask with either black or white, I can control how much of that layer is showing versus how much of that layer is invisible. So as an example, I'm going to go ahead and hide your background layer. So this background layer is not visible right now. And I'm going to click on my layer mask and I'm going to paint with black. So I'm going to select my brush. I'm going to make black my foreground color. And you can see anywhere I paint, I'm essentially erasing that part of the image. Now I'm not really erasing it, I'm just hiding it temporarily. Because if I switch my colors to black and white, and instead of painting with black, I paint with white, I can bring that right back. So it's kind of a way to erase without actually erasing my picture. I can just hide and show any part of my image. So let's get the entire image back by painting white everywhere. And now I actually want to hide the entire image. So I'm going to switch, make black my foreground color, and instead of the brush tool, I'm going to use the paint bucket tool. Make sure my layer mask is selected, so it's got this little blue rectangle around it, and then just click, and it's going to fill that entire layer mask with black, which means that entire layer is hidden. So now what I can do is switch back to my brush, switch back to white as my foreground color, I want kind of a soft brush down here in the brush tool options. If I click on the brush picker, there's lots of different brushes that I can choose. Go ahead and pick one that's got kind of some soft edges to it, maybe something like that. And I can control the size with this slider here. So I want to brush about that size and then just start painting with white. And again, you can see wherever I paint with white on that layer mask, that layer is going to show through. So remember, we're painting on the layer that has the yellow tone removed. I can make my brush a little smaller and kind of get the edges a little better, make sure we get his ear in around his face kind of thing, uh, something like that. And in fact, I want to zoom in a little more because we want to do some fairly precise painting. And then go get our brush. If I paint too much, switch from black to white. And then whenever I paint black on my layer mask, as I mentioned, that part of the layer is hidden. So I just want to do a little bit of painting like this to kind of just get around his face. And I've used a soft brush so you can see the edges of where I'm painting uh, are a little soft because I don't want to have to worry about real hard edges. So just kind of soften up the edges a little bit. Uh, make your brush a little bigger to get this stuff. Uh, hold the shift key down and we can pan around. And just like that, paint around the edges of your image. There we go. In fact, we're going to hide the top of his head, kind of like that, because we just want his face uh, showing. Something like that. There we go. Uh, now, when we show that background layer, remember these are like sheets of paper stacked on top of each other. If I click the little eyeball to show the background layer, that other layer is shown. So I've essentially got this little bit of your grandson's face pasted on top of that other background. And remember, this part that we have pasted on top uh, has that yellow color cast removed. If I hide it, you can see that was the original. And if I click the little eyeball again, it'll show this color adjusted version of your grandson's face. So that's the basic technique. Uh, let me double click on the hand to zoom out to fit so we can see the entire photo because the next thing you had asked about is how do we get rid of these red uh, reflections from the red lights overhead uh, on both of uh, the tops of their heads. And we do that in exactly the same way. So first thing we want to do is click on our background layer, drag it up to our new layers icon to make a copy of it. Now we want this layer all the way on the top of this that stack of um, pictures that we have. So I'm just going to drag it up so that one's on the top. And this time, instead of removing the uh, yellow color cast on the skin tones, what I want to do is get rid of this red. So with that new layer that we just created selected, back up to our Enhance menu, back to Adjust Color. And now what we want to do is adjust Hue and Saturation. So I'll go ahead and select that. Again, we've got a dialog box that opens. It starts off in what we call the Master Mode, which means we're adjusting all of the colors. 
And I can mess around with this a little bit to try and get it better. But really what I want to do is just get rid of the reds uh, inside uh, your husband's hair. So instead of master, we want to switch this to reds. And then on reds, if I start to adjust these sliders, and I'm going to adjust the saturation slider, I'm going to pull it all the way down, and you can see all of the red tones are removed from the image. Other colors are left, but the reds are just removed. So I can mess around with this until it looks somewhat decent. Now, don't worry about the rest of the image. Just sort of focus in on the top of your husband's hair and the top of your grandson's hair and adjust that saturation slider so that it looks somewhat reasonable. Maybe something like that. And then hit OK. And so you can see now we've got this layer with all of the red tones removed. Not all of them, but most of them. And again, if I click the little eyeball, it'll hide that layer. So you can see our original hair. And if I click the eyeball again, it will show that layer so we can see the version with all the red tones removed. And then from here, the process is exactly the same. We want to create a layer mask. So we just click on our Add Layer Mask icon. We pick black as our foreground color, use our paint bucket tool, and click on our layer mask so it completely paints in black, thereby hiding that entire layer. Now we grab our brush, we switch from black to white, and we come over here and just paint on top of your husband's hair, and we can show just that layer wherever we're painting white on the layer mask. So as simple as that, we can hide that red uh, reflection uh, from the top of your husband's hair, and we can very precisely control where we hide the red and where we don't. So I want it hidden on the top of your husband's head. Uh, I actually want to hide it on the top of your grandson's head as well. So I can do the exact same thing here. I can just paint a little bit on the layer mask on top of your grandson's head. Maybe make my brush a little smaller to get the edge better, and something like that. If I don't want it as strong, so it looks kind of good on top of your husband's hair, it doesn't look so natural on your grandson's hair, instead of painting with pure white, maybe I want to paint with some gray. So I can just click on my foreground color chip. Instead of white, maybe pick something in between, like a, a medium gray, and then paint on that same area. And you can see it partially blends that new layer on top of the old layer. So we can do something like that make it look a little more natural. And so if I turn off this layer, you can see there's the before. If I turn it back on, there's the after. So as simple as that, we've just added a couple layers. We've used layer masks to control exactly where we're painting with these color adjustments. One layer to remove the reds, one layer to remove the yellows, and we've got a new composite image that looks much better than the original. So hopefully that's enough information to get you going. Uh, again, thanks for sending your photo in and enjoy Photoshop Elements. Take care.